Good morning, folks. The SDO is back and just as good as ever. As a massive plasma filament towers over the northeastern limb, we can now get back to full-scale solar analyses and include the coronal holes for looking ahead to the next earthquake watch. We'll also have some interesting news and some weather, but we will begin over at spaceweathernews.com, checking out the last day on our star. Bright active regions, dark coronal holes, and thinner dark filaments, but none of them active, no flashing, and no eruptions to be seen. The solar flaring continues its trend downward, but we can't just sleep on the X-ray radiation just yet as a number of sunspots are dancing into face Earth this weekend. So a couple of areas where umbras are grouped, but those maintain a homogeneous polarity. This can change by the hour though, so we'll keep watching. The primary eruption threat today is not from sunspots, but the thin dark plasma filament's center disk, the dark, curvy, snake-like structures which have luckily remained completely stable thus far. Three days of solar wind from Discover here. The speed in green is up and elevated, but a steadiness and lack of variability to the stream has led our planetary shield to be able to handle it very well with only minor disruptions and instability. Well, folks, that massive corona hole up north brought volcanoes and quakes, but that's quieted down for days now, and it is departing, leaving our next opening incoming on the south. Didn't even have a five-pointer in the last 24 hours, but we've seen New Zealand and areas to its immediate north rock with this exact structure in periods before, and so alas, the global seismic and volcanic situation should get another boost before the weekend is over, and my eyes are on the southwest Pacific. Top news includes a new Venus hypothesis, so the observers likely didn't miss the barrage of new ideas coming out about a once habitable Venus. Well, this shows that if true, it could have seeded the Earth multiple times with life due to greater asteroidal interaction than with Earth and Mars. Then this one comes out of NASA's Earth Observatory using MODIS. Now this article is all about the heat waves written by the Cherry Tree Foundation. Russia's cold anomalies were just as strong and more widespread than the heat. The Middle East baked indeed, but if you expand the map to show Turkey to the north or Africa to the west, the red might begin to feel outgunned, and indeed that cold patch in the northwest here went up to Alaska with the southeast definitively below average. Another example of ignore the title, check the actual facts for yourself. Folks, this is more of that killer hail. That was actually from two nights ago in Montana. Don't want that rocking your noggin. But last night was wild as well, and this time it's Connecticut with a tornado ripping through the region. A central low-pressure node in the U.S. tonight is going to drive bad storms up into the Midwest again, with a deluge continuing near New Orleans and in the greater coastal area in the Gulf. We all know about the wildfires in the western U.S., but this one in southern France and Portugal is causing a large amount of havoc as well, and when we pull up the wind map, Notice the high pressure stamping the southwestern nations here, pretty much keeping rain away today 100%. The home and nexus for these morning news and everything else we do is suspiciousobservers.org. Check it out, and if you somehow missed our August 8th morning news from just this past Monday, three days ago, gotta see it. Earthquake Challenge with Jeffrey Love goes another step, and the lightning shots are <laughs> electric as well. Got weather around the world, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 3.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.